What's going on YouTube? I'm Wayne and this is Wayne's Fish World. Sorry for a week without updates. I've been extremely busy with life and I've been extremely busy editing future videos. I've got a return of the pond video coming. I'm going to be doing some breeding outside which I cannot wait for. I've got my 15 gallon column tank which is going to be a saltwater tank. All you saltwater people are going to shit a brick when you see what I'm going to do with that tank. And I've been working on the business side and it's just been a, a really busy time for me. But I got a plant order in yesterday and I'm ready to show you guys the stuff that came in. And I want to talk about some updates that came with it. So as you guys can see, the 55 gallon on top, oh man, I hope my battery don't die. I'm going to have to make it quick guys, I apologize for that. The 55 gallon on top's got Ambulia, uh, Rotala Nonjens, I'm sorry, Rotala Wallachai, Stargrass, uh, Dipodilus, Diandra, Altananthia Reniki, and this is an old one. You can see this is immersed, no transitioning problems whatsoever. It's getting the underwater red leaves once more. Um, Rotala Indica right here at the line going back, and Rotala Najasan, and a whole bunch of Luwigia right there. Down below, I added some swords down there. We've got Jungle Valve Italian, Jungle Valve Regular American, um, a Pongeton of Vassarus, Madagascar Lace. A, a mixture of swords from Radican Queens, uh, Red Marbles, Red Melons, Orientals, regular Amazon swords. Uh, that's doing really good. Up here, I got some snails in for the first time. Snails are kept in separate tanks. I pre-planned that. This is my little Neon Tetracori cat tank just for the hell of it with some spider driftwood. Um, I threw the... Uh, gold mystery snails in there because it's a little algae infested. You really can't see it, but on the walls here, so, you know, I would never scrape the back walls. I always scrape the front. That way, if I'm not here to feed the fish, the fish can graze off the algae. Anyways, but they're in there. I'm gonna see how they do. I might be start. I'm gonna see how they are first. Uh, put in a break-in period of a uh, kind of a, I guess you could call it quarantine period, just see how they're doing. And then once they're established to this tank, I'll put them on for sale. Um, Serpe Tetris, their tank is wiped clean. These banana plants are going out to somebody else. Uh, uh, hair grass right there. This is a Knackers Hornwort mixture tank. Uh, it's coming back when I got this stuff in. It was looking shitty. This is not for sale. I'm not giving anybody that. This is my banana plant tank, and this has got a uh, few red-eye uh, tetras in here and a couple baby tear plants. But <clears throat> banana plants are definitely growing. They've got some good roots on them. So, you know, when I send you lily plants, you're not getting just the bulb. You're getting the whole damn plant. Which brings me to this is my favorite part of the video. Bada boom, bada bang. We got lilies galore. Now, usually when I get lilies in, I let them grow a little bit. And... Uh, I never send just a bulb. I always make sure they got some leaves on it. But this time, when you buy a lily from me, you're not just getting a bulb. You're getting the whole plant. Root system and all. And I'll just pick a random one up out of this tank. As you guys can see, I'm just picking random ones. And they've got tons and tons of leaves. I've got 50 of these all together. So they're definitely, I want to get them going. They're high sellers. So I got a lot of them. And I'm glad I did because they came in amazingly. Uh, this is regular Java fern. Some of this stuff is actually kind of big. Like this one right here is just huge. Let me show you. That's a huge Java fern right there. But uh, they're doing good. This thing I'm about to tear down, it had java moss in there. I'm about to turn this into a java fern window loving or lace java fern tank. This is the all famous java fern trident. That's doing good. I got 20 of those plants in there. So, uh, empty 10 gallon. Uh, empty 10 gallon just got some floating wisteria. Uh, this had another tank of java moss and it's just got a little clump in there now. And I mean, that can go too if they want. And these two tanks are full of micro swords floating. I'll leave them floating because I find it's a good transition period because I get them in when they're completely immersed. And I found out if you put them underwater, they come back, but if you just float them, then they, they stay alive a lot longer. And you can see this one's a little older. It's got completely submerged leaves now. I could put that down below, but hey, I'm gonna keep it up high at the light. That way it can grow a little faster. Nothing wrong with that. And I also wanted to show this tank right here. This is the god-awful platy tank. Uh, several people cried and whined about because my pond, my tank was abusive to the fish. Um, yeah, bullshit. You know, how do you think they breed platies in big farms like seagrass farms and stuff? They're not taking individual tanks, keeping them crystal clean. No, you, you put them in mud ponds. The fry eat off the algae. They eat off the done, uh, the eaten, uneaten food at the bottom. Such, if you go down here, you can see 
the little guys are down here. There's another little guy right there. Just as I was just speaking of. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's kind of dark. There's some here, there's some there, there's some there. There's, they're everywhere. But this is what ideal conditions are for raising fry because it's got lots of algae and uneaten food for the babies. Well, actually, there's no algae in this tank. But there's lots of uneaten food in this tank for the babies. There's lots of stuff in the graze upon on the bottom. There's microorganisms in the dirt bed that I have. Um, the floating plants are keeping this tank biologically clean along with the substrate. Even though this water has tannins, that's the only thing wrong with it. If I put a bag of carbon right above that air pump, then this tank would be completely fine. It'd be crystal clear and no one would whine about it. But that's how I do my platies. Um, there's no difference from when the uh, farmers do it. I mean, <laughs> you guys can see I'm feeding these platies and they're going at it just like any other healthy fish. So just because their tank is tannin doesn't mean it's unhealthy. My Oscar's down here, the light's off on him. Oscar's get stressed out the bigger they are. Um, so I'm not gonna turn the light on him. I'll show you guys him another day. But I got a lot of things going on, guys. The 125's getting a re-aquascape coming up. Um, I'm taking the Fluvo FX6 off. I'm already putting the Aquion 5575's on there. Because like I was talking about in the Aquion versus Fluvo video, um, the Aquions are doing a better job. After that video, I took off the Fluvo FX, I'm sorry, I took off the two Aquions and I cleaned the Fluvo FX6. I put polyester pillow, pillow fabric in the filter, which is one of my secrets. And it just does an amazing job at filtering the water. Um, and the fluval just, it couldn't keep up with those two Aquions. And the problem with it is, it's a long tank, I get dead spots. And I had someone comment me saying, you never get dead spots with Fluval FX6. Bullshit, there's dead spots no matter what kind of filtration you have. Even when I put these Aquions on, there will be dead spots. And yes, I plan on putting a uh, power head, an Aquion power head on there as well, but I'm still gonna get a dead spot. There's always gonna be a dead spot. But the problem with the Fluvo FX6 in the footprint of my 125 is such a long tank. If it was a square tank, I don't think I would have this problem. But since it's such a long rectangle, I'm getting these dead spots where just detrius and God knows what is uh, building up on the bottom of the substrate. Now I'm triggering a little bit of blackbeard algae because of all this nutrients. And uh, I can get rid of that blackbeard algae very quickly and very easily, not a problem, but you know, it's just inconvenience. I wanna take the Fluv FX, FX6 off. I've already got a plan with it, I'm keeping it. Um, when I winterize my pond and bring my koi in, I'm gonna use that Fluv FX6 on them. That way I can house them in the wintertime in the shed or in the basement or something. Don't know to yet, but uh, koi are definitely coming in this winter. I got some nice koi coming in very shortly. I'm gonna show you guys. I got a Sanke, a Hayatsuri, and uh, Yamabuki Ogon. I'm, got my eye on one more and then I'm gonna uh, pay for my order and then have it come in but anyways guys that's what I got coming in this week uh, plants are doing really good they're gonna be all online for sale I'll leave the link in the description below comment rate and subscribe if you have any suggestions on what you want to see on this channel leave me a thought in the comment section below until next time I've been Wayne's Fish World later